business is on the up and up, so I ain't got nothing to worry about. Well, neither do I. Hi, guys. It is your favorite mystic, the siren says, and welcome back to my comment terry channel where i speak about movie tv and soon to come books and everything that i like dislike and the good the bad the ugly and everything all throughout and in between those frames of media so let's get into the disclaimer shall we so these people are not real don't take it too personal any sounds of like oh you sound like you serious you sound like you passionate we're just diving into the imaginary world and talking like it's real but when this show comes off when we leave youtube we don't care no more we don't care you don't care i don't care you know it's it's copacetic um i gotta i gotta admit with you guys like i would i really wasn't even feeling like watching this episode i this show it's different you know you can see the difference but i i just still i'm still annoyed i'm still annoyed so we're just gonna get into everything that i thought i actually wrote down notes for this one so i don't know if this is gonna be long or short but we're gonna get into it as swiftly as possible because i don't want to leave you guys here too long so let's just get into it right now right season seven episode three starts out andy and fatima are there and you know, Fatima is trying to tell Andy, like, yo, like, the scent into chaos right now, bro. Like, so much crap is happening right now. Like, you have no idea. And, you know, <clears throat> Andy is super confused. And I'm just like, wow, okay, a lot is happening right now. Everybody's frantically running around the office. Andy has no idea who most of these people are. Then all of a sudden, Fatima is back to being her sensible season one self. That is what annoyed me a little bit. Now, I said annoyed me, not made me angry. Because where is this coming from? Right? Is she always her sensible self at the office? Not lately. Not lately. You could make the argument and say, but when they're at the law office, Fatima does act like that. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since Fatima has been this resourceful, this useful, this sensible, this smart. Okay. It's been a hot minute since she's been like this. And it may not have been since season one. It may have been like eh, two seasons ago. But ever since her and Zach got really serious, she stopped being sensible. I'm sorry. Boo. Tomato, tomato, tomato. I understand. I understand why you're upset with me. But it's fine okay it's just an opinion everybody has one and we do not have to agree it annoyed me that she was so sensible and that andy was just ditzy and this is why i keep saying to y'all right i picked up andy in the last few episodes I, I enjoyed what she had to say i enjoyed her demeanor but i kept saying this is the andy i've always wanted to see because i've never liked andy this is the the andy that we saw who was getting carted around by her little assistant paralegal that is the andy i've always known and i don't i don't necessarily hate andy in this moment i don't hate her in this moment but andy has always been the one who seemed way less capable like fatima trying to tell her to do her work and to focus that is the andy i've been knowing so every time they try to be like oh you're a good lawyer and this and that and this i'm just like okay sure sure tell the sure writers so yeah she's back to being sensible and i'm confused but it is what it is hayden walks up okay and oh you know before we get into hayden um they she discusses the obvious um her team discusses the obvious with her that you know 
the stuff might be in your name which is a decent you know you know that's decent but if they find out that gary's dusty money helped buy the penthouse and the car you might be in trouble sis you're in terrible danger girl so you know all of a sudden she gets worried because she didn't even think that you know the fact that she's still living in that penthouse might be a problem which you know i'm not gonna be mad at her for that um, i remember at the time when she wanted to give up the penthouse i want her to keep it just to be petty but i guess girl you shouldn't listen to me <laughs> you shouldn't listen to me you should listen to your gut and gone back to your little apartment anyways so hayden walks up and of course they're like oh, get away from me but at this point in the story because we all saw what happened at the end i'm not exactly sure what he thinks happened or what argument they got into but his attitude from here on and the previous next episode switched up which is fine he's the villain how long was this truce gonna last but you know hayden is saying you know andy you might get fired you see your partners are getting antsy and they're looking for a scapegoat I think it's interesting also that she didn't think of that. This is what I'm talking about, guys. How does she not think of that? When she realized that her boyfriend was getting investigated by the FBI and her office was frantically walking around, she should have been worried immediately. Because what does Gary being investigated by the FBI have to do with your office? Right? But then you realize everything that happened with her and Robin, right? him trying to get more involved in that way trying to own the place in that way he put a lot of dirty money into that place he had placed a lot of dirty money into that establishment since he's known andy specifically bro so i think hayden had a point that like look if i tell the truth they can't tie it back to me because all of our dealings were normal even if his money was dirty all of our dealings were normal whereas with andy his abubu side would come out abubu stands for a b u s e don't forget it so i think hayden definitely had a point there um for once hayden was waving and i said was because you know it's not that way anymore but he was waving the white flag calling for a truce for the fbi uh, investigation i spy an alliance i liked it i really liked him in this episode it made sense to me he wasn't necessarily super genuine but they trusted him in the moment slightly like okay fine you don't rat me out i won't rat you out i appreciated that andy was willing to go along with it for five seconds um because you know they both need each other so to speak right now at this time anyways let's just get into the part that i don't really care for <laughs> yeah danny and tony oh my god so the episode starts out and obviously when i made these notes i had these thoughts and then the writing got a little better so they would clear up what i thought like oh last season you would have been right about this thought but right now you're kind of not but there was one thing that i was completely right about and we can get into that all right but this part i was wrong about but i'm just gonna tell you what i thought you know danny was cleaning and i was like so first andy is all good a stepford cuckoo and danny's a stepford too like stepford is my code word for housewife right now not saying it's a bad thing i'm just saying the way that it is portrayed in this show it doesn't really match up with these women because you know there's no differentiation between them to say that this woman is a little bit more of a housewife type than that woman you know and I said housewife type, so they're not completely like a housewife type because they all need jobs. But like, you know, we never really see any of them clean like that. So it's like, mm, you know, if you want to put that archetype on them, you need to show which one of them is more likely to do that. So that when they get into the relationship of their dreams, ugh, then when they start doing that, we're like, okay, yeah, that makes somewhat sense because she's more likely to do that. None of these girls really seem like the type. I mean, for the most part you probably figure fatima would be that type you know fatima would do that but the way that her relationship dynamic is with uh zach he would be the one cleaning most of the time all right so i saw her cleaning i didn't like it but the only reason she was cleaning um is because you know she's worried about the therapist which 
I'm not mad at her for that. I know I don't like her right now, but I wasn't necessarily mad at her for what she was saying. What annoyed me, right? Why I said, you know, no matter how much better the dialogue has gotten, there's still too many remnants of the nonsense. Tony is shocked that she's cleaned the apartment. And I was like, huh? The disrespect, excuse me? Um, it's kind of, it, it, it just kind of like, little things kept happening where it's like why are the partners whether it's on the girl side or the boy side shocked by things these people are doing i know why i'm shocked because i've been watching them for 10 years exaggerating i've been watching them for years and i never knew the sabrina's always wanted a baby or whatever like like there are things that we don't know that they should know because you've been dating and mating for months but you know it's fine we can date and mate and you don't even get to know me like that anyways so danny they were having a conversation about the therapist and stuff and she's just like look i know that it doesn't matter that the place was a little bit messy and we smell like we just woohooed for hours last night but everybody judges and so that's why i'm cleaning up so i at least don't look completely too messy I would rather her think I have a little facade on than her see me for exactly who I am and judge me on that. And you know what, Danny? I agree with that. I agree. Is it healthy? Not at all. I'm not saying I agree like she's right. I understand where she's coming from. She has a point. Um, the way I think, guys, there's a difference to me with having a point and being right. Everybody has a point about something. A broken clock is right twice a day. All right. everybody had a point even people that you hate in history had a point about something however they're not always right so i think that danny was right um no sorry that danny had a point about judgment this is what i think about judgment just in a short um tldr everyone judges some people are just louder and more obnoxious about their judgment than others while others stay quiet and judge you quietly um please in the comments don't talk about church people and judgment stop everybody who believes in anything spiritual is judgy okay the astro girlies judge the islamabad girlies judge the hindu girlies judge everybody judges all right so before you say oh yes i agree what you say petra you know church ladies ladies just be looking at you all judgment that's not what i'm talking about okay i'm talking about everybody 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 thank you Anyways, so I was just saying some people are just louder and more nauseous about it than others, but everybody judges. That is true. Especially since I live in the island, I live in Jamaica, this island is filled with judges, all right? High priestess, high powered, Supreme Court. We are all personal Supreme Court judges. And this country is filled to the brim with judgmental people. So I know what I'm talking about. Now, we're also a melting pot. So, you know, we're filled to the brim with all the little religious girlies uh, or spiritual girlies just to add all of you in there okay now in my opinion you can disagree if you want to i saw what i saw i saw everything i do not care at this point you can disagree i said what i said in my opinion tony is not a very good partner for danny danny is over here stressing out and it makes sense that she's stressing out but he doesn't have any idea how to calm her down while she's anxious i said quote she might as well get back to that doja if you don't know doja is a brand of mary jane a brand of that puff puff huh? a brand of that rasta concoction i'm just making up words so you guys can know what i'm talking about rasta concoction is not what it's called but yeah okay and he's not helpful He's just telling her over and over again that, you know, you know, he just keeps telling her for the millionth time, just open up. Like, that's not how therapy works. Like, the therapist's not going to come and say, you should just open up to me. That's TV therapy. People who have actually gone to therapy have said multiple times that TV therapy grossly misrepresents people who do therapy and therapist. Did you, okay, in case you guys didn't know, people who go to therapy and therapist are not portrayed properly on TV. 
I've always said the one thing that has ever been portrayed even slightly properly, and this is within and this is within margin for error, is um orphans and the foster care system. What do I mean by that, right? It's it's mostly depending on what show you watch, portrayed as like a negative experience that could be good, but it's mostly bad. Right? It shows how terrible the foster care system is, DCFS, how incompetent they can be a lot of the times that is publicized right it's not to hate DS dscf workers i'm sure you personally always do your job but unfortunately you who do your job does not always get publicized you know the negative is always the majority in situations like that sorry for that noise but yes i in my personal opinion when i was a kid that could be different now but when i was a kid i always thought that the foster care system was the only thing that was ever really portrayed properly on television <laughs> tell me what what you think is something that is always been in shows that you think has been portrayed um the most accurately because i'm sure it's not accurate all the way i'm sure um it's better or worse in some places but you know if you watch stuff like um, Law and Order SVU and all that stuff and I'm sure people who watch those shows don't think oh my god it wasn't that bad for me some of them some of it was that bad but yeah so I, I feel like you know since therapy does not get utilized properly it kind of frames the narrative that Tony is just like okay just open up to them that's not gonna work sir that's not gonna work and then instead of like okay obviously i can't talk her down because i'm not preston yes i'm going to be making comparisons if you don't like it you can leave since he's not preston and he doesn't have the gift of gab and preston was not perfect but if they were having a serious conversation and it wasn't like it and she was like going to do what she needed to do he'd be able to calm her down by giving her a little nugget of wisdom he wasn't always smart but he was wise and y'all know in tv shows they always make a differentiation between those two things anyway so let's say tony's the opposite he's more smart than wise it's showing pretty well here that he doesn't have the wisdom to calm down his girl that he'd been beating and mating with for months let's just be honest here also dating and mating would be my new term for when you're dating somebody and you're woohooing with them all the time okay um instead of helping her while she's frantic he decides to you know tell her just to work it out get dressed and heads out she asks if he ain't gonna help her clean he dismisses her in the nicest way he possibly can okay no i don't you did so well here you did so well danny 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 i see nothing but red I see nothing but red flags. I see nothing but red tears. I see nothing but red. Why won't this man just at least pick up a sock or something? Huh? Did he even take the wrapper that you found on the table? That Did he take it up when you gave it to him? I think I remember him giving it back to her or something or him never taking it and she said to throw it away. He couldn't even throw away the wrapper? Okay girl absolutely not hmm. girl no 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 also the part that really upset me as well is that he proceeds to tell her to break the beginning of her little confidentiality with the therapist and tell him everything now this is an unpopular opinion meaning i don't have to be right about this this is just my personal opinion I don't like this because she needs to clear her mind then decide if she wants to let him in yes she can tell him it is her business to tell him though he should not be like okay you need to do this and then even though it's still some sort of a md thing a doctoral thing where there is a level of confidentiality you need to tell me what if it went well but so much trauma got dredged up that she don't want to talk about it right now and it might take a few more sessions for her to become for her to feel better about it enough to discuss it with you you ever think about that tony it's all so you ever think about that tony? no you don't you just think that you're right about everything and because she is demonized she thinks that she's wrong about this particular thing and that you're right and now because of what happened she's whatever let's not jump into that yet but yeah i don't like that 
I understand why he's saying it, but I feel like if he's really that smart and he really has been in there, because here's the thing, right? He told her what he was in therapy for, but he didn't go into detail, right? He said, oh, I, I went into therapy when I broke up from my marriage. That's super general. It's, it's kind of specific. But it's also super general and it still made him look good. It didn't make him look crazy. You know, like how Danny was like, oh, therapy's only for crazy people. But then he kind of proved her wrong by saying that he went to therapy and kind of a general summary as to why. It still didn't make Danny think that he was crazy. So you didn't tell her enough. You didn't tell her what was wrong with you enough. So why she got to tell um, you what she says in therapy? I feel like one of the reasons he decided to make her go to therapy is because she is not forthcoming with him in a way that he feels is enough and so he feels like she should just go to therapy so that she can be more open to letting him know all her business danny don't do it do not do it don't do it if he's not astute enough to be able to tell what's going on with you to a certain degree i don't know what you're doing here okay all right also lastly for this section apparently for a second i don't know if she just forgot today or if she wore that outfit for the opening but then forgot while she was cleaning but she forgot about the opening because tony was the one who reminded her why are you wearing that busty outfit if you forgot about the opening why would you wear that for the therapist did you see what the therapist was wearing i don't know her breast size I don't know that I don't know that she's in the puppy love and 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 honeymoon phase of her relationship because she doesn't look like it. That's all I have to say, Danny. I've never seen so much of Danielle's bosom in my face. So I don't want anybody coming and saying, are you shaving her for what she's wearing? Her wearing that for the opening is fine. But I've never seen her chest that wide open in my life. Why is she wearing that for a therapist appointment? Why? Why is she wearing that for a therapist appointment? Okay? That doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, moving on to Karen, now that we're talking about the salon, right? So, Karen's salon <laughs> had a bit of a snag. Obviously, it did open today, but the building owner came in, turned off the lights, and demanded her money, and I was laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Look. Karen may not be the one that is annoying me this particular time. You know, she's been quiet. She's just been doing her and I appreciate it. But she's still Karen. And so piece of me still enjoys the little moments. All right. But she's fine. All right. But here's what I wanted to speak about, about this scene, right? Karen murmurs about having to pay the rest of the money out of her personal account since her business account magically wasn't sufficient enough even though it should have had enough money for the first payment right karen states that it's just another thing that she has to do by herself i was like Bish, please you squander so many opportunities that could have been financially beneficial to you and your baby and your business right right because of your baseless morals and your pride. Now, I could be wrong about this. Like I said, she hasn't been annoying me recently. So even if I don't agree with all the decisions that she made, she's a little bit more tolerable now. But in this episode, I started to see the remnants of old Karen. And I swear to God, <laughs> some of you are new here. In the beginning, when I started talking about Karen on this channel, some of the way that some of you guys who are who come every week found me was hearing me complain about Karen. Okay, I spent a good 10 minutes ripping into Karen. because This was during the time when she was fighting for Zach. I saw remnants of that today. I saw remnants. We'll talk about that later. But, girl... You had opportunities. Zach was giving you money. Aaron was offering you money. You wanted to do it yourself. You decided to be self-sufficient in that way. You decided, and you can, it's no problem. You decided to speak to your contacts, speak to Sabrina, to find out a way to get the money yourself. Nobody's mad at you for that. 
but you cannot then complain that you're doing everything yourself like what is it because you were mad that the, the girls weren't there early so you wanted them to be there so that they could split the bill how much more money do you want and dima to give you i'm just asking all right i'm not upset with her for this but girl you need to think about all of the opportunity that you have personally squandered okay i'm just saying bro all right now moving on moving forward yes i know a lot happened there but i'm going to get into that a little bit later just hold on okay moving on and moving forward hayden is scared and is asking gary to stop calling him gary is delusional hayden stands on business i'm so proud of hayden in this moment in this moment guys in this episode i like hayden i'm proud of him great moment you know he's just like look i'm not helping you you shouldn't even be calling me stop calling me we need to talk i'm over here at my office they're investigating me they're asking me about you i thought you were legit son it's it's giving it's a chop it is a chop i'm i don't want to help you and of course you know gary okay once he doesn't get what he wants within these within this last season his mask will just slip completely and he just goes to insulting hayden right hayden puts his foot down and refuses to aid his ex bestie that my best friend he a real bad he got his own money but it's so dirty okay we're we're here with it running in real life okay and look he's saying about gary every time because you know you love when i say it. he is a criminal and hayden will not be intertwined because hayden is a weasel i agree with gary there he is not trustworthy but he is not a criminal he's not you may not like him but when he was trying to figure out what was going on with zach that wasn't criminal zach was criminal so okay guys calm down this is not me saying you know hayden has the moral ground no i'm just saying hayden is not technically a criminal he's just you know an annoyance that you know that i understand people don't like him but you know he's not a criminal gary's a criminal and technically zach is a criminal but y'all don't want to talk about that no more anyways so then the episode gets spicy all right tamira returns to seduce hayden and get back with him claiming she fell in love i was like okay okay girl sure <laughs> yeah right right girl i wish i wish i wish that was true i wish that she had a 0.5 percent more screen time just so i could confirm whether or not that's true but for right now i don't believe it at all i don't believe that she is into him at all it's a lie it's a chop um yeah she playing games but i liked the visual i liked that hayden still doesn't trust her but you know he missed that cook you know he wants to go back to me in a little bit um i was giving very much enemies to lovers she was telling him the truth to a certain extent like yes you were right I was trying to get some dirt on you which is not true she wasn't trying to get dirt on him i don't know why she said that she was just trying to she was just supposed to distract him um you know so that he wouldn't get dirt on zach so i don't know why she framed it that way maybe i'm wrong let me know down below about that specifically but yeah it was giving kind of an enemy to lovers i was kind of sexy i liked it i liked it it was very good i enjoyed that whole scene However, I'm, I'm just kind of mystified as to how he's able to do all that in his office. Does his office have opaque walls? Ain't nobody gonna see? I'm just asking. But anyway, Tamara looked good. Hayden looked good. The scene looked good. Everything was looking good. Okay. Now, let's move over to another side of the law office. Andy is too worried about Gary to focus on the job and Zach's case. Now, y'all know I don't necessarily care too much about Zach's case. I know... It's gonna get worked out so i'm not necessarily very worried and plus you know they're trying to paint zach as this angel right now and i'm not standing for it stand up i'm not standing for it i'm sitting my bottom down and letting the scenes pass as they may but once again as i was saying about fatima she is over there trying to tell andy how to do her job why is she the one doing that now i understand that andy's completely worried about the fbi so we're gonna give you a pass 
this is very reminiscent still andy of how you usually are and this is why i've never respected her as a lawyer okay very very personally anyways next scene all right she had danny had the first therapy session and the thought that ran across my mind okay um is how much does she even afford this therapy is notoriously expensive okay so unless it was paid for by the state which it could be who paid for it you know is the first session free was my thought but then you know from the lady speaking it seemed it might not be free um did tony pay for it that would have been nice but i don't know if tony paid for it because you know they never really get that deep they never get that deep this it's so surface level and weird with them that they never get deep enough for me to know okay i'm serious about your mental health babe so i will pay for your therapy something that would make it hard for me to dislike him something that would make it hard you know we all could fight in the comments for him because you like him and and i couldn't fight you back there's nothing about him at this point because the fact that danny is finally getting her wish fulfillment with this nigga nothing about it but that that y'all really have and it's weak i said what i said all right so in the end the therapy i think her name is carisha she's nice Carisha, please. <laughs> Hope not. The therapist states the obvious, and Danny sends her away nicely, sabotaging the whole thing, not opening up at all. You know, like 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 we expected. I feel like if she would have opened up, it would have been way too much character development. I have to be honest, and it would have annoyed me because where is this girl? Huh? You're telling me that the magical chocolate bean just healed her so much she's like a completely different person now absolutely not i'm glad that she flubbed the first little um therapy session because that's classic danny that's just classic danny okay and you know what tony you get what you get if she's gonna change so much as to you not having to worry about her looking the other way like she did with every other physical interaction she's ever, she's ever had that you're gonna get the other side of her that we all know about which is that she might not sabotage a relationship by mating with other people she's gonna sabotage it in other ways i hope you're ready for it because people kept saying that you two are very alike so maybe you can handle it sir you can tell i'm not rooting for him but i'm just saying all right so now she's gonna be worried she's she's gonna try and avoid tony because she's not gonna want to speak about this and it's understandable but classic danny anyways next we are at the bank with sabrivri all right rich shows up at the bank to pseudo apologize for leaving sabrina high and fertile <laughs> not high and dry high and fertile okay sabrina is annoyed and doesn't want to discuss it because she's embarrassed you know and i can understand that um she's there beside her little manager though the the lady of punk color complexion and i'm not gonna get into that because i don't care i think it's really stupid and annoying that in a atlanta that you know you're gonna tell me that I, I just i just don't care these girls have enough issues i'm not gonna add rust for the shones into it just cut cut them off you cut it out if andy is not necessarily having huge racial issues problems anymore i'm not gonna take it from sabrina you deserve to be watched you deserve to be watched because of what happened at the bank, Sabrina. You deserve it. All I wish is that they made your supervisor black so that I don't hear nobody saying, oh, is there going to be a racial issue with Sabrina? Do you think it's right for her to be going through? Set the Shut up. I don't like that it's a punk person because I know you guys are going to have this shallow conversation. I wish it was black because you needed somebody to watch over you. I, I defended you a little bit when people were saying that you were just as culpable as um Maurice. I defended you a little bit. I said that you were doing some work at the bank. You were the one who would cut a conversation short and you would get back to work. But you still need to be watched because your judgment is not sound, sis. It's not sound. And I said what I said. All right. Anyways, next scene, Trey the the delivery boy is back to pick up the knickknacks that pam bought that led to karen almost losing the new salon get out of here pam just leave just leave i remember a couple seasons ago i kind of liked pam because she was being really helpful with the pregnancy and she was being less annoying and i was like oh it, it seems slow like it was almost like uh 
character arc for her right seeing why she's annoying why she acts that way why karen keeps her around and we were starting to see a nice side of her but then everything that led up to the fire at the salon i was like yeah i can never really like pam like that i don't hate her but she could never like be like a favorite character it's it's a chop no so pam is the reason that karen almost pseudo lost the salon what <laughs> Pam, it's a chop for you. It's a chop, madame. It's a chop. All right. All right. So, the FedEx boy is here. He's definitely feeling Karen. Karen is feeling him back. And my only words to that is at least he not ugly. Because you guys know how I felt about them trying to push the narrative. They're like, oh, look at her and the contractor. I don't think she liked the contractor, but I think... It definitely could have gone there had he been here longer and that annoyed the crap out of me because he just everybody pretending that like he was like gorgeous or something like stop playing with me just stop stop playing with me please anyways unfortunately i'm already making mental comparisons between trey and aaron i'm sad i don't dislike trey i don't but i definitely in my personal opinion i'll make a video about it i feel like everyone but sabrina has already found the one okay i'm just gonna say this they already found the one but the writers did not care to give the girls a decent arc to make them change as girls from girls to women and to make the boys change from whatever flaws they had to who they are now to put them together to make the relationship end out well they decided not to do that they decided to make it dramatic but i saw through that and i feel like danny andy and karen have already met the right people for them people who make them better people People that also give them what they want as well, to a certain degree. I know that Danny was never going to get everything that she wanted, but considering how easy it was for Preston to make friends in the noir community, I feel like she would have gotten what she wanted from him eventually if she decided to stay. Let me, okay, let me stop. Y'all know I'm a destined shipper, so I can go on, but I'll stop for now. All right. All right. So the girls step in. Danny's here. Uh, all the girls step in Karen is upset right and you know the girls are supposed to help her set up I forgot all about that they came at the end everything been set up right the girls are too wrapped up in their own drama to remember you know and I put as a side note that these girls are terrible people and bad friends okay I swear but you know, when it comes to Karen, she has a point as usual. Karen has a point a lot of the time. The issue and one of the reasons why people constantly disagree with her, me and other people included, is because even though she may have a point, the problem is that it always comes from the wrong place. And if you have a point, but your reason for why you came to that conclusion is messed up, then people aren't going to agree with you, even if you're initially right. Now, this show is this show and the writing is okay so of course the girls blame themselves somewhat um even though they really shouldn't have of course karen has a point about her friends toxic cycles right about how they won't even care about something positive that's going on with their friend they will just converge together to speak about the negativity and mess and sort of throw out the friend that needs their positive support to the wayside she was she had a point about that however She's only calling that out because she's upset that Fatima was at brunch with them. And this is what I'm talking about, right? I wanted to talk about how much Karen had a point and she right and she's the one with the moral high ground right now. But the only reason that she's doing this is because she's still a little Delulu, a little Delulu about Zach. And she she's jealous of Fatima still. She's still jealous of Fatima. And that that invalidates her claim to a certain extent she has a point but she's invalidating her own point with that and girl i can't help you with that i really can't but i must say the drama that's going on with these girls is big it is but she almost lost the salon and she couldn't even you know join in with the with the toxic gossip train with that by saying hey i almost lost the salon so you know it's been a it's been a bad morning for me too you know she couldn't even join in with them because she was just so mystified that like they came to her salon opening with all of their drama 
didn't even give them time to like sip and get drunk and then spill the tea no just immediately came in not necessarily wanting to be helpful being lethargic being tired being sad and i agree with her in that respect like come on now you're coming here drop your worries at the door be there for me be my friends hello hello okay next scene zach has terrible timing i said what i said okay at first, I was wondering what he was even doing at the opening. Then I saw that he was just trying to use it as a soft cover to get Karen to agree to the DNA test. Time and place, Zacchaeus. Time and place. Luckily, Miss Lisa bounds into his car, which hmm, looks like she has a little bit of boundary issues. Just a tiny bit, tiny bit, okay? And, you know, as usual, apart from Aaron, because I think she was wrong about Aaron. I personally think she was wrong. I feel like she was just like, no, he's just too good to be true. That's not good enough, ma'am. That's not good enough. But excluding Aaron, she's almost always right, okay? She tells Zach that no matter what his intentions are for this, he shouldn't be at the opening and that Karen does not need this from him right now. And I agreed wholeheartedly. I agreed wholeheartedly, okay? She tells him how... He, she, he doesn't need she doesn't need him to give her flowers to give her congratulations and be there in person she needs an available man who wants to give her flowers and give her support and i love that i love that but unfortunately it just made me cry in my soul eternally for aaron okay sigh all right um but i agree with her there she was right so you know zach gets stuff and goes back home as he should now Penelope is stupid a little bit, a little bit. I'll say a little bit because he was really turning on the, the manipulator Riz in this scene. But Penelope, oh my God, she was annoying me in the beginning of this scene. All it took was wine and flowers, wine that she can't even drink, mind you, for her to give Gary a meeting. You can talk to him on the phone. Why you gotta see him in person? That is you allowing the pheromones that you've become addicted to to wash over you as you see him in person. You smell his cologne. You should just talk to him on the phone. If you shouldn't talk to him at all, but the phone is the only thing that should have happened here. Stupid. You get to watch Gary work. He's nigga oh, magic. He's magic. All right, on these these humans. All right, it is infuriating get this man off my screen i beg i plead of you all right he spilled her food on her on purpose to get her to get up and leave and so he could take pictures of all of her cards and tricked up i hate this man i hate him i know people kind of the way i kind of like hayden people kind of like gary because they enjoy the drama that his scenes are providing now he's not just being an annoying bug to andy anymore consequences for his actions are coming up and they're enjoying this and i understand that but i hate this man and i've hated this man for a long time so this like low sorry slow spiraling is not good enough for me get him out of here in the next two episodes he should be out of here i don't i can't do this anymore i really can't oh my god he's killing me so next scene all right danny and the gang thank pam for her help and i'm like okay look i'm sure she helped karen thanked her for helping but you know how i feel about pam anyways so danny says that they all need therapy right when pam talks about how stressed out karen has been and he's like you think i need therapy she need therapy we all need therapy and that was the title for one of my last videos because i meant that okay they all need therapy it's not just nanny it's not but you know i guess danny i guess danny is going back to how she used to be um but i still don't like her because girl you're stupid so i don't care if you're back to giving the wisdom nuggets you're still dumb and i still don't like you but i agree with you on this point i said it myself all right now karen's delusional side is starting to slither back out all right please tell me why she was annoyed that zach did not show up girl stand up stand up ma'am ew why why are you upset that he didn't show up oh i thought zach would have shown up i got his baby that does not mean anything he's not your friend if if danny had an opening 
I would expect him to be there because he's Danny's friend. He's not your friend. So what, you were nice to him and civil to Fatima for once, finally? And so now that means that he just gotta be nice to you and, you know, semi-flirty? Is that, is that what it is? Girl, common sense is a virtue. Anyways, so, next scene. I was upset for a second when Sabrina was at the juice spot because she was looking around like she had never been there before. So you know how I feel. I have been comparing her to Danny for these last two episodes. And I was just like, has she never been there? Have you been dating and mating with this man? You've never been to his place that he owns. Huh? Why? What? But she has been there. Apparently, he just refurbished it, which is fine. Um, Side note, this is just me being petty. How come I saw, you know, a woman of pump color complexion working at the fuel spot, huh? What happened to the pro-black coating, huh? What happened to the protect black, what happened? What happened? Like, what, what's going on with that? What happened? You know? I think it's interesting. Now, anybody can work anywhere and I don't care. But, you know, the way that this show is set up, I would think he would only hire people of his hue, you know, to help the community or whatever, you know? I'm just saying, you can see the hypocrisy of these men in every little thing that shows up on this screen. This is why I did not like them initially when they came out with the nonsense and the little frat bro um, symbolisms and pledges and stuff. I told y'all, I told y'all. I'm not saying he's a bad person, but he's a hypocrite. And mind you, I agree with a lot of things that he said today to a certain extent. But you know, we have to be honest. Just saying, all right? Now, Rich explains why he doesn't want kids. That's because he was the oldest of eight and he was like the pseudo dad for all of those years. You can probably tell that maybe his father wasn't around because stereotypes. So he was the pseudo dad. And so that's why he doesn't want kids. He values his freedom, but he values Sabrina as well. And this is not even him saying, maybe I'll change my mind. This is him saying, I don't want to lose what we have. Guys... I'll get into it in a second. Sabrina says that she has always wanted kids. Rich says that their relationship is perfect apart from this issue that they have. How have you been dating and mating with this man and you do not know that he wants kids and he does not know? I guess let's just find it. Let's say you've told him that you've wanted kids before. He doesn't know how seriously you've always wanted children. Huh? I will give them this though. This is the first serious conversation that anybody in a relationship has had ever i don't count fatima and zach because this is not their show i don't count them i'm talking about the four girls yeah that's what i'm talking about this is the most serious conversation we've ever seen had and personally in my opinion considering all the hijinks that goes on in fatima and zach's relationship it's it's, it's very serious over there anyways um so i felt sorry or Sabrina okay because she you could see her dying behind the eyes as she willingly gives up a non-negotiable for some good pain with decent credit okay I don't like that I don't like that and then Rich sort of caps it all off making an impossible promise to ensure that she'll never regret choosing him over her future child here comes the drama I see it already in my opinion low-key high-key rich got the woman he wanted at sabrina's sacrifice now i want to discuss for a second i want to discuss for a second compromise versus sacrifice okay i feel like there are some things that you can compromise on because it's not that serious it might just be a slight personal preference versus foundational aspects of your personality um morals all, role stuff like that that if you settle on that you are sacrificing if you have a religious affiliation right and you do or do not want kids those are non-negotiables you can try to negotiate them you can try to bend them to your will but at that point you're not compromising you're sacrificing and these are the things that can lead people to either being in a unhappy marriage down the line if she even gets married, have a relationship, whatever, down the line, or can lead to divorce, right? 
what could lead to all sorts of domestic disputes because you're not compromising you're sacrificing compromising is like okay he's a little cleaner than i am i will pick up some of the slack so that he's not the one doing all the cleaning that is a compromise but it doesn't really matter in the end you live in the house you have to help whether or not you want a baby that is not a compromise don't ever compromise something like that i don't want none i'm not going to be with somebody who wants one because i don't want them dying behind the eyes being with me and look it's cute you love me so much, you're willing to let it go. I understand the allure of that type of dynamic, but it's never going to work out in the end. It's not. It's not. If it is that they both didn't want any and they both changed their minds, that is different. But if they come in, they're, they're older now. They're not young. They're not in their early 20s. They both come in, they're older. And it's like, nah, what am I supposed to do about that? I can't do anything about that. All right? So in my opinion it's not a compromise it's a sacrifice but we like rich to a certain extent so we understand it's just a show who cares but in real life don't do that don't do that in real life now we're almost done here but i know it's 15 minutes i promise you i'm not gonna make it extra 10 minutes i'm not gonna make it an hour let's just speed through okay so in the next scene fatima it seems that fatima is still a little bit raw and jealous of karen and i have no idea why she's still jealous of karen um, in the beginning when she wasn't you know in the beginning where she had that mask on where none of us could see that she was jealous of Karen at all like she was never jealous of Karen she just thought Karen was annoying and angry this is the way you should have acted three four seasons ago Fatima not now now it doesn't make any sense especially since you've gotten therapy since then so what oh that oh make sure that means that she took off the mask so she's more aware. that doesn't make any sense I told y'all that her character is regressing to the point where now she's doing things now that she should have done before to make the whole i have therapy now i'm better thing make more sense i said what i said okay zach admits that he doesn't want karen to do another paternity test and i'm like wow because number one he believes her and number two even if she's wrong he doesn't want to deal with the hassle which makes sense but whatever okay fatima admits i want to get into this so bad fatima admits that zach and karen we're gonna focus on zach right now will say one thing but their actions do not line up what did i say what have i been saying for so long every time i would say that i thought that zach would get back together with karen or that he should because their actions are not lining up people would be like no zatima this zatima that zach is an angel zach has changed so much even Fatima is telling you, this is what I'm, I, I have been bullied, okay? <laughs> Slightly bullied, okay? Y'all made it seem like it was totally okay for Zach to do what he did. Y'all made it seem like it was totally okay for him to cheat on Fatima. Yes, I'm one of those people who think that he cheated that time in the closet with Karen. That is cheating to me, okay? Very personally. Because if Fatima did the same thing, Zach would have been out, that is how you know it's cheating or not. I know we've had this question how to know if it's cheating or not. Here's how you know. Because if Fatima did it, Zach would have left at the time. It was too early. And even if he would have come back later, he still would have left. He wouldn't have given her any leeway the way that she gave him leeway and a chance to redeem himself or whatever. So stop playing with me. He cheated. I kept telling y'all that his actions, um, when the fire, him acting all confused about Karen, all of that, it was him acting in a way that, that seemed to make sense, but really didn't. And I'm so glad that Fatima finally said it, because I've been saying this for such a long time, and I was led to believe that I was just seeing things wrong. So thank you, writers, for clearing that up. I was correct, and I knew I was correct. Anyways, winding down. Gary is a super villain and I knew it. All right. This guy got access to all of Pen Penelope's accounts and is the beneficiary of her trust. This is, this is horrific. This is horrific. This video was too long, so I'm not going to get into the previews, but that's terrible. Okay. All right. Now, does Andy deserve the tongue lashing from Leland? Yes, she does. However, Leland just found a way to call her a whore in 1920s professional jargon which was hilarious to me he falls out because he had a heart attack so he's the one who unalives who you know gets unalived in the previews i guess lucky for you andy because he's about to blow up your spot i'm just glad 
that it wasn't um, ramen because a lot of people were assuming that it was going to be ramen. And in that scene before Leland came up, I was saying, where is Fatima throwing these masks that she picks up these episodes? Sense of a one minute, whew, jealous the next, whew, like, where are you getting all these masks, Fatima? Anyway, just to speed through what's going to happen next episode, Penelope is probably finding out what Gary did, wants to tell Andy, smart move. Um, I think that's really all that I care about It's going to be happening in the next episode, yeah yeah but thank you guys so much for watching this is a little bit longer but it's only four minutes longer than my last 50 minute video um i hope you guys enjoy please let me know your thoughts down below i wrote notes for this one that's probably why it's longer because i was able to talk about every point as it came but yeah um please do enjoy and see you on the next sister saturday goodbye susu